Hi, my name is Josh Mealy. I'm a scientist who does research and development on accessible map technology as well as other technologies for blind and visually impaired people. I've done a lot of work related to accessible maps. And most recently, I've been helping the San Francisco Lighthouse develop a set of accessible BART station maps that are not only tactile, but also in large print and with an audio component accessible through a smart pen such as this. By tapping on different parts of the maps with the tip of the smart pen, you can hear audio information about those elements of the map. The maps, of course, can be used completely independently of the smart pen. There's braille labeling and print labeling, but the smart pen provides an additional layer of information that can be useful, especially for people with limited braille skills. Each of the stations has three maps associated with it. One is a street level, one is a concourse level, and one is a platform level. Each of these different map types has a set of symbols that it always shows. And very often, there are standard features that can be found commonly on all maps. For example, every map has a title in braille and print at the top. This one's title is MacArthur, and it indicates that it's the street map. The sequence of the maps is always street, followed by concourse, followed by platform. This is the first of the three maps in the MacArthur series. MacArthur, then it says street. Occasionally, a streetscape will be so complex that we need to split it up onto more than one page. In those cases, it will say something like MacArthur, street, and then a direction such as north or south to indicate whether this page is the northern page or the southern page or eastern or western in some cases perhaps. Another common feature for all street level maps is the compass rose always at the bottom left corner of the map. The compass rose is a small circle with a line extending from it and the letter N inside the circle in braille and print. The line indicates the direction in which north is. In this case, north is slightly to the left of the top of the page. On street level maps, you have features such as streets, parking lots, bus stops, taxi stands, loading zones, and of course, the concourse of the station. In general, we will indicate only the footprint of the concourse or the shape of the overall station itself, rather than any specific features within the station. On this particular map, we've got a couple of concourse level features such as fare gates and ticket machines and even a station agent booth. But those are only indicated on this map because this is a street level station and there's room on the map to indicate them without causing too much clutter. Streets always have braille labels associated with them. In general, they will be aligned with the street, such as in this case, where 40th Street goes east to west, horizontally on the page, and the word 40th is written just above it and aligned with it. All braille and print labels on all maps will always be oriented towards in the standard orientation, that is, right side up in portrait orientation. There will be no need to rotate the maps to read any of the text in braille or print. Some streets, when they're aligned vertically on the page, will have their labels either at the top or sometimes at the bottom of the street that they're associated with. This street is Martin Luther King. The label associated with it is MLK. That abbreviation is something that is written in Braille simply to conserve space. The street itself is also re re referred to often as MLK. However, the audio layer says Martin Luther King Jr. Way. That's a good example of sometimes how the audio layer provides additional information over and above what's visible in Braille or print. Another feature of the street level maps is the loading zone. This is a long, narrow rectangle adjacent to one or another street. In this case, the loading zone is adjacent to 37th Street. 
The oval with the letter B inside of it adjacent to a street indicates the location of a bus stop. This bus stop is also adjacent to 37th Street. There's another bus stop here adjacent to 40th Street. The long axis of the oval is always aligned with the street that it's associated with. That helps make it clear which street a bus stop is associated with. Similarly, a taxi stand, which is indicated by a narrow triangle with the letter T inside it in braille and print, indicates the location where taxis pull up to pick up passengers. You can tell which street the taxi stand is on by which street the taxi, the bottom part of the triangle is touching. By bottom part, I mean the narrow side of the triangle. You can tell which street a taxi stand is associated with by where it touches the street. The concourse, in this case, is a rectangle with the word concourse inside it. It doesn't indicate any of the features of the concourse. It only indicates the shape of the concourse. To see the detailed features of the concourse, we'll switch to the concourse map. Concourse maps show the interior of the concourse area of the station. Sometimes the concourse will be below ground, sometimes at ground level, sometimes above ground, but it always shows the interior of the concourse. Around the sides of the concourse will be a solid thin line that indicates where the walls of the concourse are. Of course, like other maps, it includes a title at the top that says the name of the station plus the word concourse to indicate which type of map it is. The concourse, of course, includes features such as ticket machines, fare gates, station agent booths, stairs and escalators and elevators, and possibly benches and restrooms. Occasionally, there will be other types of features as well. Again, all of these features are standardized and are shown in the key that's associated with the maps inside the front cover. In this particular case, we have a ground level station, so all of the escalators and stairs are leading to a level above. We have escalators that go up to the level above, and we have escalators that come down from the level above. Stairs, of course, don't have a direction of flow, so they go up to the level above or come from the level above. We also have elevators on this map. In this case, we have two different platforms, so we have two different sets of elevators that go to the two different platforms. The platform maps for each station indicate in their title the station that they're associated with and the word platform to indicate that it's a platform map. It shows the platform configuration. Sometimes it's a side platform, meaning that the Platforms where the pedestrians or passengers stand are on either side of the track. Sometimes it's a center platform, meaning that the passengers stand on a platform between two sets of tracks. The maps indicate what type of platform configuration you've got. It also indicates which trains arrive on which platform by braille and print labels as well as audio labels. Along the edge of each platform, are small tick marks that indicate where the train doors will open. Additionally, where the center doors of the train open, the tick marks include small knobs to show that those are the center two doors for the train. Since BART trains always align the center of the train at the center of the platform, this is a good way to know that if you get on a train at a particular door, you will also get off the train at another station that same number of doors forward or back from the center. It's extremely useful in planning your route through a set of stations. It also helps you know which features to find when you immediately exit the train. At the labels for each track are at the top of the map. In this case, we have Fremont and San Francisco and track two. San Francisco at track four, Pittsburgh Bay Point, track three, and Richmond, track one. 
Those are the names of the trains and the train lines that arrive at each of the four platforms on the MacArthur Station platform level. Also, on each platform map, we have symbols indicating benches, escalators, stairs, and elevators. One of the most important parts of this map is the audio component that's contributed by the Smart Pen. The Smart Pen can tell you about each feature and label on the map simply by tapping it on the map feature itself. However, since many people haven't used one of these Smart Pens before in this way, we want to make sure that everybody knows how to do it. First, let's talk about the pen itself. Here we have an on-off button at the back end of the pen indicated by a dot, and all you need to do is press it to turn the pen on or off. There's no sound that indicates whether it's on or off, but if you tap the pen on one of the pages and, and hear the sound, you know the pen is on. If you push the button, then it's off. I'm going to turn it back on. And one of the other important features of the pen is the way the tip is shaped. This part of the pen includes a small camera which is responsible for figuring out where on the page the pen is being tapped. That means that you need to be careful not to cover it with your finger like this. When you hold the pen, hold it just like a regular pen, but being sure that the camera is pointed towards the page and that your finger is not covering the camera. The way to explore a map with the pen is by holding it in your right hand or left hand, perhaps if you're left-handed, and you can then use your fingers, even the ones that the pen is being held with, to explore the map. When you find a feature that you want to know more about, you put the pen into position and tap the pen. Stairs up to pedestrian overpass and stadium. Now I'm going to talk about how to tap the pen so that you're most likely to get an audio response. Sometimes you'll tap the pen and you won't hear anything. That means that the pen didn't see anything. Also sometimes you'll tap the pen and you'll hear a small tick sound, which means that there is no label that you can hear that's associated with that part of the page. This is what it sounds like when it goes tick. Sometimes when you tap, it won't say anything, and that simply means that you didn't tap it properly or that the camera didn't get a good glimpse of the page. So you need to just tap again. If you don't hear that little tick, that means that you need to tap again. The best way to tap to find out information about a feature is to tap just beside the feature with the camera able to see a fairly flat part of the page. It's not crucial that this always happens, sometimes that won't be possible, but it's most likely that the pen will be able to respond if it's looking at a flat portion of the page. So for example, if I tap just next to this stairway, it will say, That told me what this stairway is and where it goes. And I tapped just next to the stairway. I also used a little scribble when I tapped the pen. Sometimes that helps. However, you don't want to leave the tip of the pen on the page and move it around. You won't get a response that way. The pen responds when you tap and lift. So sometimes what you do is tap and scribble and lift. I'm going to tap a few other features on this map to demonstrate. I'm going to tap just next to the, this feature that goes across the street. Let's see what it is. Crosswalk, mid-block pedestrian crossing for San Leandro Street. Now I'm going to tap on this bus stop symbol just next to the crosswalk to find out what it is. I'm going to tap the pen just next to the bu bus stop symbol, and I'm being careful not to cover the camera with my finger. I'm going to tap and lift. Shuttle stop to Oakland Airport on the east side of San Leandro Street. I can also tap this triangle with the letter T in it 
that's on the other side of San Leandro Street. Because my hand holding the pen is my right hand, the camera may not be looking at an exactly flat part of the page, but it will probably work anyway. Taxi stand on the west side of San Leandro Street. Also, I can find out street names by tapping next to the streets. Snell Street. 71st Avenue. Bus stop on the east side of San Leandro Street. San Leandro Street. In that case, the bus stop was very close to San Leandro Street, so I actually tapped in the bus stop area, not the street area. Of course, if you tap the labels, the braille labels, you'll also hear information. I'm going to tap the label at the top of the page. Street level. I'm going to tap the label that says San Leandro. San Leandro Street. In that case, I had to tap twice. Now I'm going to tap the label that says Snell. Snell Street. Another feature, of course, on every street level map is the compass pointing north. If I tap on that, it says... That shows me that the line going north is that away. And that's basically how it works on each of the maps. Anywhere you tap, if it has a label, will say the label. If it doesn't have a label associated with it, it will make a tick sound. And if it wasn't able to see the page with the camera, then it will say nothing. That means that you need to tap again and maybe give it a little scribble before lifting the pen off the page so that it will have a better chance of seeing a part of the page that it can identify. That's how it works. And it works that way on concourse level maps and platform level maps as well. The San Francisco Lighthouse is really proud to be part of providing this new form of travel information for blind and visually impaired people. Of course, you can obtain these maps from the San Francisco Lighthouse, or if you would like more information about how to train on these maps, or possibly to provide this type of information for a transit system in your area, you should get in touch with us. To contact the San Francisco Lighthouse, on the web, go to www.lighthouse-sf.org. Send email inquiries to info at lighthouse-sf.org or call us on the phone at area code 415-431-1481.